The Mariana Trench is the deepest spot on this planet. At nearly 11,000 meters deep, Challenger Deep is more than 2,000 meters deeper than the highest mountain on Earth is high. Humans have only been to this inhospitable world a few times, and yet they found life there. Only recently, there was another expedition. What new findings were made and what is going on down there? We are looking into the matter and now looking forward to the journey with you to the deepest point on the Earth. The Location of the Mariana Trench A few hundred nautical miles from the east coast of China, below Japan and above the Philippines and Indonesia, the Mariana Trench stretches for nearly 2,000 meters. The trench was discovered in the late 19th century. At the beginning of the 20th century, a British ship named Challenger took the first reliable depth measurements, finding nearly 11,000 meters at the deepest point. That remains the unbroken record today, and the deepest spot in the world was named Challenger Deep after the ship. Scientists are fascinated by this place. The reason is the abundance of frightening things but also the surprising variety of extraordinary life forms in this dark and cold world. Although the trench is so close to the Earth's core, it is freezing cold in this world. At the deepest point, temperatures are only a few degrees, and it is pitch black. 11 kilometers deep, no light from the surface reaches this place. In the oceans of this world, the influence of sunlight already stops a few hundred meters below the surface. Then the mysterious world of the deep sea begins. We humans now know more about the cosmos and its secrets than we do about the depths of our Earth. The deep sea is considered a challenge for scientists because the pressure in the water soon becomes so high that divers have to pass and even submarines are exposed to such heavy loads that they have to be a technical masterpiece to descend to such depths. Despite the risks and the dangers, people have always dared to visit the Challenger Deep, and they found incredible things. Research at the Extreme Depths We must explore the oceanic depths if we are to truly investigate the complex processes that occur on our planet. There are several deep oceanic trenches on this planet, and these places could hold secrets whose deciphering changes everything. Not far from the Mariana Trench, there is another specific oceanic rift in the Pacific Ocean that is almost as deep. The second longest depth on Earth was traced just a few years ago between Antarctica and Tierra del Fuego. The rifts are caused by interactions between the Earth's plates that collide. These plates move slowly towards each other. Annually, it can only be a few millimeters, and in exceptional cases, sometimes 10 centimeters or more. A deep sea trench is formed in a so-called subduction zone. A certain mechanism ensures that one plate can literally bend the other one there. A piece of oceanic crust is lowered and a deep fissure is formed. In the case of the Mariana Trench, the Pacific crust bends under the Philippine crust. As deep as the trench is, it is not the point closest to the center of the Earth. Because the planet is wider at the equator due to pressure on the poles, the distance to the center of the Earth is shortened near the poles and lengthened at the equator. The differences are so stark that parts of the not-so-deep Arctic Ocean floor are closer to the Earth's center than the Challenger depth. Exploring these habitats is a challenge. Humans and their technology are not made for these places. The best apnea divers, who descend into the ocean equipped with only one breath, manage just over 200 meters. And submarines typically operate at depths of up to 500 meters. In rare cases, submarines can stay at 1,000 meters for a while, but then things get dicey. Only special submersibles can reach 11,000 meters, as the Trieste of deep-sea pioneers Jake Picard and Don Walsh did last century. In 1960, on the first human dive in the area, they found evidence of life in the deep, and this feat prevented the U.S. Navy from dumping nuclear waste in the Mariana Trench. Since the trench officially belongs to the island of Guam, which is a U.S. territory, the Mariana Trench officially belongs to the United States. This heroic feat may have saved the entire planet from global contamination of the oceans with nuclear-radiated waste. Picard and Walsh's dive really kicked off the exploration of the Mariana Trench. Life at the Deepest Point on Earth Researchers make a serious mistake when they think higher life needs sunlight and warmth to evolve. 
In the Mariana Trench, the pressure of the water is as great as 50 jumbo jets standing on one thumb. It would instantly crush our lungs down there. Picard and Walsh were able to get to that depth only because the Trieste kept the pressure of the water off the men's bodies. Nevertheless, the special submarine was panting quite a bit under the strain. Since a screw had already popped out of the fairing, the men decided to stay on the bottom of the Challenger depth for a shorter time than planned and soon ascended again. Since their visit, there have been several other submarine dives, mostly unmanned, to investigate the geology of the trench. A few years ago, U.S. director and adventurer James Cameron dove into the Mariana Trench, and in 2010, there was a National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration expedition. For a long time, researchers thought that only microorganisms or bacteria could be found at such depths, but that turned out to be wrong. The Mariana Trench is as colorful and diverse an ecosystem as many other habitats around the world. The Mariana Trench was first discovered in 1875 while conducting a global circumnavigation. At that time, no one had any idea what was really going on in the depths. There were stories of sailors who claimed to have seen terrible monsters that had come from the depths. But stories of 10-meter-long octopuses were long dismissed as sailors' yarns until real giant octopuses were found. Although these monsters no longer occur in the Mariana Trench, they are entities of the higher and also complex dark layers of the deep sea. Only 5% of the deep sea is considered explored, but now some 4,700 species are already known to thrive in these habitats. Sounds of the Deep Let's start with some startling discoveries in the Mariana Trench made by scientists from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration using a hydrophone. A hydrophone is a device that records sounds on the ocean floor. Now, of course, the intriguing question is what researchers heard there at the deepest bottom of the ocean. But what did they hear? The device recorded sounds over a period of three weeks, and the scientists were shocked at what they heard. You would think that the deepest part of the ocean would be one of the quietest places on Earth. But down there, there is almost constant sound from natural sources and, frighteningly, from human sources as well. This means that our human sound pollution, among other things, interferes with the navigation of whales and dolphins. However, the ambient noise field at Challenger depth is dominated by sound-triggering major and minor earthquakes the distinct calls of baleen whales, and the overwhelming noise of a typhoon, Category 4, that happened to pass overhead during the measurement period. The human sounds came predominantly from ship traffic. The sound researchers identified various ship propellers, sonar sounds, and sounds from engines. Water is considered a very good conductor of sound. Sound travels even much faster in water than it does in air. Now we know that our noise travels to one of the most remote places in the world. The scientists went on to record a loud earthquake of magnitude 5.0 that occurred at the depth of about 10 kilometers in the nearby oceanic crust. Since the hydrophone was at 11 kilometers, it was below the earthquake, which was truly an unusual experience for the underwater sound researchers. Aliens at the bottom of the ocean? It is often speculated that there could be alien life forms or entire cities of an unknown civilization at the depths of the oceans. Researchers have not found traces of such places around the Mariana Trench, but they have found a new species of snailfish that truly looks out of this world. Swimming at depths of up to 8 kilometers, this fish, with the Latin name Pseudodolaparis swariri, forms amazingly large and successful populations. Researchers who observed these animals said that they seem to live a happy and contented life where hardly any other living creature can survive. These white and homely appearing fish are gifted predators and predominantly scavengers. They consume the carcasses of large marine mammals and fish that sink to the depths of the sea. Food is plentiful and there are few natural enemies, so the Mariana Trench snailfish has found the perfect habitat. The enormous pressure does not bother the fish at all. They are perfectly adapted to the environment. This circumstance gives researchers in a completely different discipline food for thought. Astrobiologists, who search for traces of organic life forms in space, must significantly expand their horizons with finds like this. We can't say that life needs sunshine in 25 degrees to thrive. 
These fish show that life can be possible even on completely dark and cold worlds or in places with very high atmospheric pressure. Plastic in the Mariana Trench Can you imagine that our plastic waste has also already found its way into the depth of the Mariana Trench? Researchers have discovered the presence of plastic in a previously unknown species of deep-sea amphipod. Amphipods are a group of small, laterally flattened crustaceans found in a variety of aquatic habitats. The researchers officially named the new species Eurythines plasticus, in reference to the plastic they found in the body of these animals. The tiny marine animal was discovered nearly 7 kilometers below sea level in the Pacific Ocean by scientists at Newcastle University. Alan Jameson, leader of the research mission, noted with dismay that we are now at the point where we are already finding the problematic legacies of our culture, even in new species. While only one microplastic fiber occurs in one of four specimens of the species Eurythenes plasticus studied, considering how deep and far these waters are from human beaches and settlements, this fact alone is shocking. Flying Elephants at the Bottom of the Sea that the creatures of the deep sea don't have to be creepy at all is shown by another little animal, the Dumbo octopus. Anyone who has seen a photo of this cute creature is no longer surprised by its name. The resemblance to Disney's flying elephant is really obvious. The animal, known among biologists as Grimpotheathis, belongs to a genus of pelagic umbrella octopuses. The bell-shaped body with ears and retractable tentacles represents a perfect adaptation to the environment, as does the consistently pale color of the animals at this site. The Dumbo octopus is actually not a modern-day discovery at all. First specimens were sighted from a ship around 1883 and described by sailors. It took until the 1990s for the elephant-like octopus to resurface and for researchers to finally figure out where this creature calls home. Discoveries like these show that the Mariana Trench, and certainly other deep-sea trenches around the world, are true underwater paradises for creatures perfectly adapted to these conditions. In 2009, President George W. Bush finally placed the region under conservation and established the Mariana Trench Marine National Monument. This marine reserve includes a 506,000 square kilometer zone surrounding the trench. 21 underwater volcanoes, and several associated smaller islands. The creatures in the Mariana Trench can thus hopefully continue their carefree lives in the depths of the Earth as safely protected and secure as somehow possible. What do you think about the Mariana Trench now? Would you like to visit this place with a submarine? And what would you like to discover there?